When your rooster crows at the break of dawn Look out your window and I'll be gone You're the reason I'm a traveling on So don't think twice, it's alright Likes music method In this video, you will learn how to play the chorus to Bob Dylan's Don't Think Twice, It's All Right, as performed on the Freewheeling Bob Dylan record. The reason you won't learn the verse is because I've already did the verse in a previous, previous video here, or here, on the screen, or here. It begins with a C chord. Our capo is on the fourth fret as he's doing it on the record. Regular C. We have this very relentless pattern. Thumbs going fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth. In between the fifth is the third string index. Then he plays the fourth string with his thumb, and then you play the second string with your middle finger. Thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle. And it's pretty relentless that whole time on the C chord. When you roost a crow, is that the, right? all about just getting it up to speed. Then he just puts his pinky down, making it a C7 chord, right? He puts his pinky down on the um, third fret of the third string. Same pattern. Now, occasionally, he's not playing the and of the fourth beat, right? You, I just did that there. One and two and three and four. So depending what chord he's switching to, he's not going to, he doesn't always get that and of the four beat. It's something you might want to play around with. Um, it's hard to hear on the recording because the harmonica and the vocal are mixed so loud that the guitar is just kind of in the background. And he's playing rather um, loose and noodly, and um, it's really cool playing, but it's not like super tight or precise. Um, so you can mess around with that. Maybe don't play the and, so one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. Just get started with that, and then you can add every single one especially when you make the big chord changes. The next chord is an F chord. Again, it's this, um, only this three notes here. I'm not bothering with the first string because he doesn't play that melody note. So second string, first fret, second fret on the third string, third on the fourth, and then the thumb is swoop, sweeping, swooping, <laughs> slap, slarping over the top to play that first fret on that low sixth string. Exact same idea, except the thumb is doing six, four, six, four, right back and forth. And then in between, six, third string, fourth, second string, six, third with my index, fourth, second with my middle. Now on to the D7. We've got a cool embellishment on this chord. Pattern is very similar. We have a regular D7. Again, our thumb is slarping over the top. I looked up the word, okay? It's a word, salarping. Just, okay, don't judge me. Don't criticize me. I looked it up, www. Y-O-U-A-R-E-A-L-O-S-E-R, -E -E okay? So here we go. We have that D7 chord. But we have a neat little pull off um, on the second fret first string is being pulled off. So let's get to that. Thumb is six, four, six, four, right? You're used to that, you got it. And then we have six, index on the third, four, middle on the second. Same pattern as we did on the F chord. That ending's the tricky part, so let's do that ending there. We have the beginning starts the same, but after we play that thumb on the fourth string, I'm playing the highest string, the first string with my middle finger, getting that second fret and pulling off. But at the same time you pull off, we're hitting the sixth string. I forget what other video I did that this occurred in one of the songs. If you're not used to this, it's very tricky. So you play that top melody note, but then when you pull it off, it's on the same beat as the thumb sounding. So you gotta have a nice loud pull off, right? Only using your left hand. So just get used to that, and then get used to this idea. Play that melody note. When you pull off, 
Oh, <laughs> when you pull off, you hit that thumb at the same time on the, the low string. So you get two notes, even though you're only playing the low one. So after you do that, it's like a regular six, um, third string. at the low string, then your melody note on the third string, thumb alone. Yeah, really slow that down, practice that a lot. If you have not come across that, it's not going to be that easy. I remember putting in a stupid amount of time trying to get it down. But you're beautiful and intelligent and wise and your fingers are agile and you're going to figure it out and it's going to be glorious. So here's what that D7 looks like up to speed. Let's slow down. One and two and three and four and one and two. Got it. Here's the top string. Pull off at the same time you hit it. Third string. Here we go back to a quick C chord. Same pattern, one and two and three and four and to a G7. I'm only playing the lowest string and the highest, right? We're not playing the fifth string, no need to fret it. Uh, sorry. Here we have a cool hammer on. So it begins the same, six, third is my melody. It's the opposite of what we just did. Instead of doing the pull off and hitting that second melody note, now we're doing a hammer on, and the second melody note is going to be that low E string again. So let me uh, play that a few times for you. So six, three, four, then I'm hammering open on the top string while well, I'm playing it. Sorry, playing it first. Then I hammer on, at the same time, I thumb the sixth string. Play it open, and then the hammer on, and the sixth string happen at the same time. Really need a powerful hammer on. When I think about hammer ons, I'm, um, imagine that the instead of the neck of the guitar being right here, imagine it's like way back here against the wall. You really want to just like forcefully, you know, flick your finger towards the guitar, pretending it's way further back than it really is. That way you get a nice powerful uh, hammer-on sound without having to play it again. So let's end it. We have one and two hammer. Then the melody's on the third string and then thumbs alone on four. Same time, third, thumb on fourth. Six, three, four, one. Then you hammer on six, three, four. Tricky with that hammer on. Having that extra element confuses the right hand, confuses your brain. But just like I said before, you're so wise and noble and intelligent. Your fingers are agile and docile, and you're going to learn it in like no time at all. I know you can do it. You're brave, too. You're so brave. <laughs> and here's the fun little ending turnaround after that G7. It's a quick A minor to G to F. So regular A minor, going from 5, 4, right? The fingers are in between. 5, 3, 4, 2, 5, 5, 3, 4, 2. Then the G is 6, 3, 4, 2, right? You just need that third finger. No need to get the other ones. Then the F again with the thumb. Same idea. Uh, 6, 3, 4, 2, 6, 3, 4, 2. So we have... Now at the very end, we're returning back to a C chord, but it has a G in the bass. Ring finger is simply going up to the third fret. And we're playing same pattern, six, four, three, two, six, four, three, two. Now we're resolving that to a G, but we're keeping that finger down, so it still has the E, it's a G6 chord. 
then he moves the pinky up like he did at the end of the verse to make it a G7 chord. So again, a C with a G in the bass, six, three, four, two, repeat it twice. Just lifting the first finger. It's an easier way to think about it. Does it one, six, three, four, two? Then your pinky um, takes the place of that one by moving up to the third fret. I'm leaving this finger down, but you don't need it, right? It's just a G7. I have the F with my pinky. Six, three, four, two. So that whole part. One more time. Lift the first finger. get really specific, I, I probably lifted the, the first finger there too soon, right? Think about when the melody has to change. Right? So even though the chord was on that first beat there, I'm not playing that melody note of the B until the end of the phrase. Right? One and two and. It's on the and that I'm playing that second string. One and two and three and four and one. That's when the chord technically changes, but one and two and. Three and four. So it'd be there. Three and four and. So I'm putting my pinky down on that four. It's kind of nitpicky, but then the melody notes, instead of lifting your finger, ending them early, creating like a dead sound, which Dylan probably does on this recording. Again, it's not super precise, but you can be precise and like really have it all sing out and be very smooth and connected. It's something worth experimenting with in some songs, especially songs with delicate hammer-ons, a lot of Towns Van Zandt stuff. You really have to, I mean, this, it sounds like garbage if you don't take careful consideration of when you're changing those melody notes because they don't always change on beat one. All right, I know that was a lot of chords. You should probably write them down, but I'm gonna play through that progression nice and slow at a good tempo and we can practice together. Hold my hand, let's do it. Hold, holding hands with you is so beautiful, so beautiful. Oh. I wanna interrupt this video for one second with an important message. I know that last song you heard, a lot of you are probably wondering who wrote that and, and what that was. It was called Holding Hands With You Is So Beautiful. It was written and performed by Mike Malaro. A lot of people haven't heard of him. It's like one of my favorite songs. It's gorgeous. The complete version of it, you can just rewind the video like five or 10 seconds. That's the full version of the song right there. It's, it's gorgeous. I just wanted to share that with you guys. A lot of people don't know about, about that song. Here we go, all the way through. One, two, three. Four. It's the C. Just add the pinky for the C7. Move it to an F with the thumb. Here's the first tricky one, D7. Pull off. C. G7 with the hammer, A minor, G, F. C with the G in the bass. Now that you jotted all the chords down. Two, three. Oh, when your rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window and I'll be gone. You're the reason I'm a traveling on. Don't think twice, it's all right. Rewind, play it again, rewind, play it again, put it to 0.75 speed. Whatever you have to do, you are a champion. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you don't know the YouTube shortcuts, K is play and pause, J is reverse five seconds or 10 seconds. I think you can switch and edit how much you want it to be. L is fast forward five or 10 seconds. You could use the arrows to go back or forth a few seconds. Super helpful in repeating a part or just going back instead of having to click on your mouse. And don't do this on your phone, sit on at the computer. Treat yourself to a nice guitar lesson with your friend Mike over at mikesmusicmethod.com. Mikesmusicmethod. There's no .com. I don't even think I own that website. <laughs>
<laughs> Mike's Music Method at YouTube backslash W slash YouTube HTTP colon colon. <laughs> If you've made it this far in the video, I applaud you. You're awesome. But it also shows you're getting some value out of these lessons. I put a lot of time into them. So if you could please just at least subscribe or share with your friends or consider donating to my Patreon. It would be a huge help and keep these videos, keep me keeping these videos f coming out. It would help me to continue to continue making these videos. Just go play your guitar. Don't worry about anything. <laughs>